that's what really got me interested in electronics. Greetings, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris and today I will be tearing down a random electronics piece of equipment. And today's candidate for the teardown is an old compact camera. So yeah, on the outside there's not much interesting stuff. We've got the proprietary connector which was meant for the docking station battery compartment with some evidence of corrosion and another compartment for the camera and a connector USB with some, it's a funny, not very common USB connector so you would have to get a special cable for that and that's about it, a shutter and a three position rotary switch auto off and movie mode that's what we also have is two screws over here one, two, three on the bottom and that should fall apart. For this, um, let me pull out my favorite set of tiny screwdrivers, this little thing here. I got this on eBay a while ago for a couple of pounds and I really like those. I found them really useful for small stuff. Battery connector here, if you could see it's got a symbol of warning hot. Uh, you see the triangle here with little wavy lines inside, that's the high temperature warning. I wouldn't understand why they've done it like this. There is also an extended tab over here that actually is used as a as a latch. So that's a nice example on how to make a part dual purpose. It does the electrical connection, but it also provides a mechanical latch for the battery cover. So let's see if this will pry apart. There we go. Okay, it's coming somewhat, but not fully. Oh, silly me, there are two more screws. That does it. And the whole front face comes off, revealing the circuit board, the camera assembly with a little motor and some, I don't know, it's that zoom or focus, we'll have a look. There is some optics here for the viewfinder, here is the xenon flash, um, the xenon capacitor. Okay, here is a micro switch that detects whether the battery is inside. That's interesting. And the battery contact has corroded badly. And here we have, I think that's a temperature sensor, LM19, I think it is, and yeah, we'll, we'll have a look. This might as well be a salvageable part. The back should come apart as well. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I find this sort of stuff very relaxing, taking stuff apart that I know I don't have to put back together, just to see what's inside and take it to the smallest bits keep maybe a couple of things, bin rest of it. When I was a child, maybe, I don't know, seven, six, seven years old, I was, we had a lot of old TVs for some reason. Um, I'm talking old black and white CRTs back in Poland. And yeah, I used to take those apart for fun. I was allowed to play with them. So I took a screwdriver and dismantled them to the smallest bits that I could at the time. And I guess, I'm inclined in this way since then. That's what really got me interested in electronics because I could see all those little things that I not necessarily understood what they do and how the stuff works and that just fueled the curiosity as it would. Come on, is there something under the sticker? No, there's still something holding. Now I know I don't have to put this back together so it doesn't really matter, I could force it but where is the fun in that? Okay. There it comes. Is there a screw? Yes, there is. The screw is recessed quite a bit inside, so let's use something else. There we go. That's come out. And now, ta-da, we are free of the case. Here is the switch, and that's interesting. Well, I guess it's not that much interesting, but it's a nice way of making it inexpensive. So this here is just a plastic switch with little notches in the in the case that provide the clicking as you can see the little notch over here that goes round and clicks into the indents. 
but uh, yeah, it's not a mounted switch on the PCB, a rotary switch. What they've done instead, and I am going to keep all the tiny screws because you never know when you need one, but this little indent here is actuating a tiny little rocker switch. Yeah, it's got a center position by default that's off and then one way would be video mode, the other way would be automatic mode for the still pictures. Okay, let's remove some more screws that are visible and remove more components. The LCD will come off, but before we do, this is the flash capacitor and it's a good idea to just short it out with something because this can be holding charge, but no, this one isn't lucky. You never know. Electrolytic caps can hold charge for quite a while. They can even regain charge after they have been rapidly discharged. This should nicely just unfold when we unscrew everything. The red and black would be the backlight, so let's just cut those off. Looking at this, we've got uh, a couple of boards design. So there's uh, two boards, one behind another over here. And there's a couple of smaller PCBs, one here and one here, mounted at a 90 degree angle with, with a little right angle connector in there. And that's how they filled up everything. We've got some memory, Altec main chip BGA, it's some sort of image processor, most likely. And we'll see what's on the other board. Well, there we go. So that disconnects. I've removed, I've removed all the screws already. Here we have a LED, the red, red eye reduction LED. That snakes off to the back. And here we have another little chip. Nothing, I guess, too exciting. Let's see what's behind here. So that's just a cover, which reveals the high voltage transformer in here, a tiny little one and a big insulated wire going into the flash circuit. A diode, this would be a MOSFET or, or a TRIAC probably. You can tell because it's a, in a little 8-pin package, but everything on one side has been bridged. It's a one connection, three on the other side are bridged and one is separate. So this would be the gate or the drive and the other ones would be drain and source or the Terminals 1 and 2 of the triac. We'll have a look. We're trying to find a part number. I could reuse this. I remember I've got this little strobe box that I've purchased for a pound a while back with just a couple of blinky LEDs, but it would be a nice to put an actual xenon flash inside. This could be a good candidate if it works. We've got one transformer here. This basically charges up the capacitors to about 320, 340 volts uh, for the flash. This cap should be 350 volts rated, can't see it here, but I'm sure it is. But uh, then we've got another ignition coil here, and this generates a few kV spark, just a, just an impulse to ionize the gas in the xenon flash tube inside, and that basically initiates the, the discharge, which produces the bright flash. This looks like it has been soldered after the entire thing has been assembled, so let me just suck that solder out of there. And there we go. And now I should be able to lift out this board, I think. There is a connector here, there we go. There are those pads on the battery terminals which kind of stop everything from moving, so let's scrape those off. Okay, that's out, that's out, and I think now we have to remove the stop board to free up the cable that's going to the xenon flash. I don't want to desolder it. And this board is, yeah, a ton of via stitches, as you can see. Just one capacitor over here, two more on the other side, and a switch. And nothing else. Why? I... this is interesting. So, there is not a single active component on here. This literally just a switch. That's the shutter key. It's a single press switch. Not like the, it's not like the half shutter where it allows the camera to pre-focus. It's a single switch. But the circuitry on here is 
awfully over engineered look we've got a 8 pin right angle connector lots of trucks that go over to here which then this looks like it hasn't been connected to anything I don't know maybe this is provisioned for a few models which have another switch sensor item something over there but this could have been one of the more basic models little notch over here that ah, there we go that the, that's the cover coming off and again those short cables they had to be soldered up after this was assembled I think I'm gonna try to take it out without disassembling everything okay that came out more or less in one piece so this little tab that we've desoldered earlier on goes just to the back over here and what it does it connects to the metal casing over here which holds the xenon flash tube inside that's what connects the high voltage uh, from the ignition coil here over to casing and um, that provides the energy required to ionize the xenon in the tube okay just for kicks i've uh, put the whole thing back together without the case and i'm gonna see if i can get it to work just apply the power and see what happens but as i was uh, putting it together i've noticed that all the plastics inside that's interesting are glass fiber reinforced and it's it's got that uh, distinctive screeching noise i'm sure if you can Yeah, that's that's the glass fibers in the in the plastic so they've done that to make it more rigid and more tough that's nice and everything inside is uh, glass fiber reinforced the case is not ABS and polycarbonate it's a mixture so it's a little bit tougher positive was on here so let's apply positive I've set the little power supply to 3 volts as you can see so let's power this up and see what will happen now I'm not sure how much trickery I will have to do in order to get this going so first of all we've got the battery switch over here uh, so that's one and I need to keep my fingers clear off of high voltage area so let's do it this way so I can press that so yes the batteries are in and then there is this switch so if I turn it this way now I still haven't got any current draw so turning in this way that would change the mode but I'm not seeing any any current draw so this might be dead there was a lot of corrosions on the trucks and a lot of the trucks have actually disappeared not a happy unit not doing anything right let's see if I can get the flash circuit to work at all now I'm thinking how to power it up and there is a big electrolytic cap relatively big very near the high voltage section or the whole flash circuitry so I'm tempted or it's tempting to just apply power to that capacitor which would mean uh, that section of the circuit will get powered up that's if that capacitor is across the rail which very likely it is and this is the one I'm talking about here so this cap negative is on the outside so this I want to be the red one will be positive done I've got some wires so let's see if we apply power to it will it draw any current and it doesn't it doesn't seem so so there is some more there has to be some more circuitry that goes into this and enables the flash to charge and I can't be bothered to work out what it would be the good thing is there's uh, all the parts on this board can be desoldered and reused on a few critical parts so the transformer ignition coil and uh, the thyristor or triac or the, the switching device here uh, a diode a couple of transistors everything else we can make our own it's it's just an oscillator it's a shame i can't check what frequency this was oscillating at to drive the transformer so that experiment was unfruitful but let's continue with the teardown and over here what I thought was the temperature sensor it is it's a LM19 CIZ it's a Texas instrument uh, temperature sensor LM19 
LM19 and yeah all you have to do is um, give it a couple of volts I think 2.4 volts it said yeah 2.4 volts on the power supply and it gives a voltage output which is proportional to to the temperature that is uh, really nice I'll definitely reuse this part for something I wonder how is this stuck on so we've got two screws between the lens assembly and the viewfinder okay and here is the viewfinder makes everything smaller so there's two screws from the back and I think those would separate the optics from the sensor so here I removed most of the glue from the little gear and here is what it does from the outside you can see that the lens assembly moves very slightly out until I go over the limit and then it clicks all the way back which is about to do if you look on the inside of the objective there you go that just clicked a little bit of an adjustment it does um, I guess for a factory preset of focus let's have a look at this shutter so here it is connected uh, to a power supply as you can see the shutter is open and if I reverse the polarity it closes and I reverse it again it will open the resistance of the coil in there is just uh, just a little bit over 10 ohms and I'm opening and closing it with a 3 volt here is a closer look at the PCB the more interesting part uh, the more interesting one the one with the sensor and here we can see this is the sensor sorry I just made everything wobble a bit now the infrared sensor should actually peel off it's just a piece of rubber with the little window stuck to it and here is the sensor itself so let me see how far in can I go with the setup and here is the sensor itself this is probably as close as I can get I mean I can get a little bit closer but then the distortion in the picture becomes really really big yeah that's the maximum zoom level but you can see it's yeah there's too many lenses attached to the camcorder right now okay there we go that's probably as close as I can get but that's the pretty sense I don't know if I find it I just find it pretty you can see the bond wires uh, fanning out from the sensor plate onto the connections on the outside and that goes to the pins that are soldered into the PCB and all of this is encapsulated in enclosed in a in a glass chamber or in ceramic chamber with a glass window and yeah that's yet another optical sensor I bet if we could get uh, any closer we'd be able to look at the individual structures on the support silicon around the sensor but I need a better microscope for this I'm going to keep this board with all the high voltage stuff and the flash lamp and so now probably try to make it into a working stroboscope yeah and it's worth to keep that temperature sensor that's a that cost about a pound it's worth to desolder it I'm going to desolder the sensor and keep that for no other reasons that it's pretty and I'll keep the optics as they are the LCD, I'm not sure if it's reusable, it's a Casio 4B16BHD229847. If this was drivable from an Arduino or something, yes, uh, I will guess I'll look around and see if it can be done. Uh, I doubt it though. For this video, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please do subscribe for more random stuff that I will be doing please remember to give me thumbs up on my videos that really really helps and for the time being take care